Timor Leste marked National Press Day on October 16, the date foreign journalists were murdered while covering Indonesia's invasion of the country in 1975. 49 years on, a journalist's job in delivering the truth still comes with its share of risks. After the World News Fiki Madeira met with Timorese reporters to explore the challenges of being a journalist in Timor Leste. You know, the Indonesian army is coming up with the Itara. Remembering those who paid the ultimate price in the line of duty. On the 16th of October 1975, Indonesian Special Forces captured and killed a group of journalists in Balibo who tried to expose an illegal invasion to the world. Under Indonesian occupation, press freedom was severely limited until Timor Leste's restoration of independence. Reporters Without Borders claims Timor Leste now has the freest press in Southeast Asia. Timorese media representatives say journalists still experience considerable pressure. Many journalists still receive uh, under minimum wage in their daily uh, service. Uh, and then they are easily influenced by the politicians and move from their profession, profession from journalists and to the uh, political appointment. Reporters claim hearing a wider range of perspectives and not just from politicians would benefit Timor Leste. It is more difficult in the time of independence because we fight for the well-being of the community. Our leaders come with their historical background and people listen to them rather than experts. Last month, a Timorese journalist was arrested for covering the eviction of street vendors in the capital of Dili ahead of Pope Francis's visit. She was released without charge after being detained for several hours. The Secretary of Urban Development also forced Susanna to delay her footage of the operation on the spot. Leaders feel afraid to release information that is open to the public, like Seato interrupting the work of journalists in Kampung Baru, where I was filming. It's a public place after all. We do have some uh, intimidations, uh, interruptions in the field when uh, some journalists uh, made a coverage in the story. A lack of resources and education also impacts Asia's youngest and poorest state. Journalism is, is, uh, is an area where you need a lot of knowledge, you need a lot of understanding on issues to, where, to cover. Uh, and that is still a challenge in Timor given how young the country is. Uh, we have just been independent for 20 years, which basically means there's still a lot that we need to learn. However, working for international media has been a welcome challenge for Zevonia Vieira. Uh, uh, foreign media in ABC News Australia, for me, is, uh, I get a lot of positive challenges. It means how I can more, uh, you know, doing work with, uh, with the public interest, uh, how to identify the value news, the value story that can give impact and more uh, how to people to discuss uh, on this issue that uh, I cover uh, for the ABC News and also uh, teaching me how to more criticisms. Jevone Vieira and Francesca Suni urge leaders not to interrupt reporting in Timor-Leste and to uphold media law. The leaders have to know that we have a guarantee of the freedom of the press and expression and access to information in our constitution 40 and 41 article that they guarantee the freedom of press in Timor-Leste. To be a good leader in this country, you have to be open. You have to be, you have to accept what the media reports. Of course, you have the, the right to reply. Journalism has always been a risky job, but 2024 is the deadliest year on record for media workers with 128 confirmed deaths in Gaza alone since the October 7 attacks last year. Reporters are protected under the Geneva Conventions of 1949 and killing them is a war crime. Even in peaceful Timor-Leste, Press Freedom Day is a reminder of the importance of allowing journalists to tell stories and expose truths for their audience. Fiki Madeira, Baste Noronha, RTTL World News.